Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first live stream for WordPress Accessibility Day 2024. I am Amber Hines. I am one of the organizers of WordPress Accessibility Day, and I am very excited to be here today with one of our sponsors, Jeff Mills from Grackle Docs. Jeff, would you want to introduce yourself and tell people who Grackle Docs is? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. Hi, Amber. Thanks for that intro. Yeah. So I am Jeff Mills. I'm one of the co-CEOs of Grackle Docs. We're often known just as Grackle by our customers. And we're a company dedicated to making digital content more accessible generally. That's how, what we do. We provide software and solutions that ensure documents are accessible to everyone. And we also do website auditing as well, manual auditing with people with lived experience to, to run through the auditing of the websites. And our mission is just to not normally help organizations, but also individuals create and share documents that are compliant with accessibility standards like WorkAG or PDFUA, but even things like the office suite, making sure those documents are, are compatible as well with screen readers and make sure that digital content is usable for everyone. So PDFs, docs, spreadsheets, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So PowerPoints? It's Google, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's PowerPoints, whether it's slide decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. people send us our files uh, and we say what needs to be done to correct it and then send them back to them. Yeah, that's exciting. I want to dig a little bit into that. But first, I am just going to shout out for everyone who is not aware that WordPress Accessibility Day is going to be held October 9th through 10th this year. If you are new to WordPress Accessibility Day, it is a free 24 hour conference that takes place via Zoom. So you do have to register in order to get access to Zoom, but we have live captions, we have sign language interpretation, and it is a single session that runs the whole 24 hours. No matter where you are in the world, there are going to be sessions in your time zone. And we'll dig a little bit more into what some of those sessions are. Jeff got a, a preview that nobody else has had yet <laughs> uh, earlier today. And so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. If you want to learn more about the event, please go to 2024.wpaccessibility.day. So tell me a little bit more about document accessibility. I think PDFs is a huge thing that a lot of people have on their website, but let's start on the basic. Why is document accessibility related to website accessibility? And why is it important for people to have accessible documents? Yeah, that's a really good point. I think we're all used to hearing about website accessibility and everyone following a standard and making sure that the design is correct to start with, or we like to think everyone's doing that already until we look in detail at some people's sites, but that, that's the idea. And a lot of people, what people don't realize is that any content that's being delivered through their website also comes under the accessibility remit as well. And quite often that is a PDF because it, it's, it's so openly used around the world. There's probably trillions of them sitting around all over the place and most of them unfortunately are inaccessible and those sorts of documents get a bad rap because of that as well people who do use screen readers say i hate pdfs because they never work properly and it's because anyone can create a pdf and because anyone can create a pdf they can create a pdf badly actually pdf is the the, the document uh, with an iso standard for accessibility so it's very easy in theory to actually create an accessible pdf so if people followed the guidelines a bit like the WCAG guidelines they'd create an accessible pdf as well and so our mission is not just to run on websites, but all content and some of that content may be within websites as well, because it's no good being half accessible. If all of your website web pages are accessible, that's great. But if you have, I don't know, 30, 40, 5,000 PDFs sitting in the background that someone has to click on to then read that information and that information is bad, then you're immediately inaccessible and it's pointless to the viewer that's trying to get through to that information. And so we, we make sure that we do both sides of the fence. And in fact, I would say. A majority of our work is more on documents than it is website accessibility because we do website mm -hmm. audits. So we'll audit someone's website and send them a nice long report back saying what's right and wrong, but we're not here to fix websites. We, we don't try and audit someone and say, we'll fix it as well because ticking your own <laughs> homework is not really good. So we say, go back to your developers with all of these questions and help them out. And, and we do training courses around it as well. So for web developers, we do training courses on accessibility, what to think about with accessible design how to make sure that you know, from start to finish your website is accessible, but that definitely feeds into the documents as well. What documents are you putting on your website? How are you ensuring they're accessible to you? 
Yeah, so it's almost like maybe one of the first questions you need to think about with a document before you put on the web is should this actually be a document or a PDF or should it just be content on a web page? Is that something you it talk can be, about yeah. with your clients? Absolutely, yeah. Quite often PDFs are an easy way for a for a, uh, a company to work because all of their content creators work, they don't work in websites, they work in those types of contents in documents. If you're looking at a financial statement, you can't really make a financial statement from web pages. You could, but it's really unlikely you would do. It would be a hard copy format of something that's actually turned into a PDF digitally and then loaded somewhere or sent somewhere. There are certain times that the document has got to be a document. It's set in stone. You can't change it. This is what it is. Um, other information, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, if, you, if you allowed content creators onto your website and they can add information quite easily, I, I'd say go ahead and do that too. Um, it's just the horses for courses of what needs to be a document and, and what should be just a nice clean HTML page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always thought about it. Is this something I expect someone to print out? Then it probably really might want to be a PDF because you want to maintain a very specific format, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's quite it. And especially when you get into any, anything legal, anything that's got mm -hmm. legal connotations to it, you want a, a hard copy that's that sits on the website, it doesn't change or sits wherever and doesn't change. And you can go back to that time and time again rather than a web page that someone may go in and edit content or create new content over it. And then it becomes a changing object. So yeah, that's certainly a way to look at it too. Yeah, that's a really interesting line that I hadn't thought about if you want to have a more time bound specific thing. Uh, right. What are some of the common mistakes that you see in PDFs that people who are working to try and make more accessible documents need to watch out for? Uh, it's so similar to website. If you're looking at websites and thinking about the accessibility things there, very similar things in PDF as well does get very technical when you get deeper into it, but it's the general things that we always think about, like missing alt text on pictures. Where's the description of this picture? What is What does this mean to me? Do you have heading structures embedded correctly? Does it start with heading one, go down to heading two, and doesn't swap to suddenly a heading five and back to a two again, so that a person using a screen reader can navigate through the document easily? Are there things like form fields that are either unlabeled or badly labeled? It's a, a classic thing we see time and again uh, and we work a lot with governments and we'll see a government form that's on a website and it will say as a typical form word name and address and the name field when mm -hmm. you click on it through a screen reader the name field actually says address and then the address field says name and so mm -hmm. someone who can't actually see the, the document and is listening to the screen reader is filling it out in what they're being told and it's immediately incorrect and, and we see these things all the time so form fields are a big thing and then other really strange things like someone will take a, a bunch of text but embed it as an image so in a cited view, you can see all of this text, it's great, but actually it's an image in the document. So we have blocks of images that, are, that have no alt text to them and again, aren't described. So that's a high level, but there's like a thousand other things in there as well that we see on a regular basis. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I do think the forms are for sure something that could cause a lot of problems for users. And those can be difficult even on websites. So I can imagine bringing in someone like you all to help if you have form PDF would be very helpful because that's probably even more complex to make apps yeah. accessible. It really is. Yeah. We do a lot with user journeys on general websites as well, even outside of documents, helping people with their user journeys. So you really believe you've got an accessible website. Okay, let's get someone with lived experience that we're trying to reach out to here and run through that process with you. And then you find all the other mm -hmm. things that are happening in there. And it's the same with PDF as well. Does it really structure this way? And I say keep saying PDF, but it could be a PowerPoint or it could be a Word document or a Google Doc or a slide. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit. Let's talk about Grackle Docs, which is a browser extension, I think. Is that how you categorize <laughs> Grackle Docs as yeah. a not yeah, direct so, company, but like the original old school that works with Google Docs, which I've played right. around with a little bit. And it helps people export accessible PDFs. Do you want to tell us how it works? You're also totally welcome. I might be putting you on the spot. If you have a demo and you wanted to like share oh, your screen, we could probably make that work. But I, or, done, but I don't have one, unfortunately. I, I would have done, but I didn't think about it beforehand. Otherwise, I would quite happily have done it. it. We built it very simply so even someone like me could use it. So I'm quite happy to sit there and demo <laughs> it because even I can use it. it was, uh, mm -hmm. we, we had to make sure that this, so, so to give the background on this, it's actually a product called Grapple Workspace because it works okay. across docs, sheets, and slides. There's three different add-ons that work within those products uh, and it, it embeds within your doc sheet or slide as a sidebar and gives you a, a bunch of information. It scans through your document and says what is accessible, what isn't accessible, and then points you to the, the places where things need to be corrected and helps you correct the thing. And then once you've worked down the whole list, 
everything is ticked and you suddenly have an accessible document. And so we, we have hundreds of thousands of users of this around the world now, many site licenses across the world too, and mainly because it's so simple to use. You don't need to know a lot about accessibility. It points people in the right direction. We have a lot of education systems that are using it now to teach people about accessibility. Because if you just open a document and follow the instructions, you, you suddenly get it after the second or third time of running a document, you know immediately to make the headings are correct and make sure that the color contrast is okay. And you, you put the alt text in, you, you do it by, you know, by accident almost, because you just know you've got to do it like, like good learning should be. Um, so that, that was our original product. It's been going since 2016. Um, and mm -hmm. it just sits there and it just helps you out. Um, it, it's just to sit there as a little kind of um, helper on your shoulder just to give you a nudge in the right direction every time you open a document, run Grackle against it, and it will just run through all of the standards um, and make sure that you've, you've formatted it correctly uh, in a doc sheet or slide. And then with docs and slides, what we've added to that is the ability to export that to PDF. So you have an accessible PDF as well, because again, when people start sharing documents outside of their network, it's not normally a doc that they would share. It would be something a bit more solid like a PDF. So we give that ability too. And then we didn't make um, PDF output available to Sheets um, because a spreadsheet in PDF format is horrible generally anyway. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. so we've got a different output to that and we make that an, an accessible HTML file instead. So you can share that more easily too. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it does things like you mentioned, checking for alt text, whether you're using headings or headings are in, in the right order, I'm guessing. You mentioned color contrast. I think I've noticed when I was using it that on the PDF export, it'll set all of the meta tags appropriately for the PDF. So it does a lot of those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you followed all of the questions and, and got green ticks next to them all and you hit export to PDF, you don't need to do any more. Or the PDF will automatically be created as accessible PDF right there and then. There's other things in wow, there. that's fabulous. Some, some clever, funky stuff as well. So there, there's obviously the physical layout of a page versus the logical layout of the page behind behind the scenes um, and we can adjust the logical layout without changing the physical appearance so it may be that you have paragraphs side by side and the the way that we would read it would be because we can see it we can see that you should read the right hand first instead of the left hand but because of the way google docs works it, it wants to read the left hand first instead of the right hand we can actually mm -hmm. change that structure in the background really easily within the product so when it goes to pdf the reading structure automatically guides you in the right way it should be read yeah yeah, that, that is great. So you also have a WordPress plugin, which I think is newer, right? Grackle scan for WordPress. Yes. And I actually saw we had a comment from a viewer, Dave, who said, when I was still in university, I used LA text group and PDFs. Now I wonder if I made them accessible. And I have a feeling that Grackle scan would be a good thing to run <laughs> on those. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's exactly it. Yeah. Tell us about how that works. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Now, so Grackle Scan, we already have a Grackle Scan product that will work on any website. We've had that for some time. We'll run across the website. It effectively literally does what it says. It scans through your website, picks out all of the PDFs that are sitting somewhere in the background, and then it will give you a long scale report on each of those PDFs of whether they're accessible or not. And so uh, the way that we work with that with our customers is that they'll run that scan probably once a month. And what they'll do is they'll pick out as many PDFs as they can to correct. And when we quite often do that correction for them, but they could do the correction of the PDFs themselves, reload them into the website as accessible PDFs. And then the next month run the scan again. So you build up a story over time of how well you're doing because accessibility is a journey. You can't expect someone to swallow the elephant on the first day that you've got to find out what's wrong. You've then got to put a process in place to correct all these things. And, and these things take time. And so the idea of this kind of continuing report over the year just shows you're doing the right thing. And also reminds you, actually, you've just uploaded a bunch more new PDFs that may or may not be accessible too. So that's been available and been running that for customers for a long time. This year, we we'll, we just released, and it's beta release right now, of Grackle Scan for WordPress. So this will set actually within WordPress, so it's embedded in uh, as add-ons are in WordPress, and sit in the background, run through your library, and, and do it integrally from the inside. And we've got some extra funky bells and whistles in there as well, so you can actually click on a specific PDF and send it to us uh, and we'll give you a free quote to say it's going to cost this much to correct do you want us to go ahead and then what we'll do is we, if they say yes is that we'll send that back to them as a corrected PDF so it's a nice funky mm -hmm. stuff coming in there and it, it because it sits so tightly within WordPress it, it's going to be a, a pretty sweet thing for everybody 
Yeah, that sounds fabulous. So is that a free plugin you can get off wordpress.org? Is it a premium plugin? Where would it people will find be. it? It, it will be. So at the moment, we're going through that process. Um, but yeah, it's going to be mm -hmm. a free, free to use. There'll be a kind of freemium version of it because there'll be some, we have some customers that are really high end users and it, it really hits our servers when they start chugging through their sites every day because we have to look at every PDF in detail. So once we get to a certain size, then we have a kind of progression to say, well, actually, guys, this is costing a bit of money now. So let's have a conversation about that. But realistically, for everyday users, it'll be a free and accessible um, plugin. That's fabulous. Yeah. So June had a question, which I think is relevant to this. Let's say you're scanning your website for accessibility on your plugin or on your PDFs, and there's a whole bunch that are really bad. Do you ne normally advise retrofitting a PDF, going back and trying to fix it? Or would you start over new on that document? That's a great question because it really depends on the process that got to that document to start with, I think. In, in, in many cases, people can't go and back and, and start again from scratch, so it becomes impossible. So actually making that PDF accessible works quite well. Um, in, a, in an ideal world, someone has a system in place that when they create PDFs, um, they can do all of the things in line to make it accessible to start with. So yeah, it really depends on the process that builds up to it. And even though we love people sending us PDFs because that's our job and we'll correct them for you. But we also have a consultancy division that will sit down and we've done many uh, digital accessibility surveys for our customers saying, okay, this is the way to do this better to start with. So you don't fall into this trap at the back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just, uh, sorry, just one of the questions that popped up from Adrienne as well about, do you rec recommend putting the exported PDF through PAC 2024 checker? Yes, is the answer, but uh, there is a better answer to that out there now because we have our own Grackle validator that is like PAC 2024, but it's an online version. So PAC 2024 is a program that you download Windows only, does a great job of checking for accessibility on PDF, but we've released again, a free version, online version of Grackle validator that will do the same thing. It will run through that and give you a report back on the, the accessibility of your PDF too. So would you, are, and I don't know if she was referencing if they come out of a Google doc using Grapple Workspace, you're saying you might still recommend running it through the Grapple Validator? As yeah, well. you, you could do. Effectively, you, you're going to have an accessible PDF anyway, so you're okay there. It's already gone through a, a, a background validated and tech check as it's gone through, but there is always fun with Google, so it doesn't mind a little second check as well. Yeah, yeah. great. Let's see, June had another question that maybe we can talk about before we shift gears and talk about WordPress Accessibility Day a little more, which was, are there regulations to keep an eye on the web accessibility policies often talked about now? Do you know of any regulations related to docs that we should be aware of? Yeah, the, the big one is that all of the, anything that you're putting through a web comes under that jurisdiction. So if you're putting a doc through your website, it's absolutely under, under that jurisdiction anyway. So under the, the WCAG guidelines that are there too. Um, and then pretty much every um, country in the world has um, accessibility laws that cover documents too. So absolutely, you should be making sure that your documents are, um, are compliant with accessibility laws, as well as just doing the right thing and, and making sure that your customers can read these things. There's pretty much a law in every country that covers that. Some countries are way more litigious than others. Uh, and we know we know plenty of lawyers across the states, for instance, who do like to sue each yes. other a lot more than the rest of the world that are there just to do that. And they'll pick on you to do that. But the rest of the world is catching up. We do a lot of work out of places. I'm in the UK, for instance, but we do a lot of work here on mainland Europe, Australia. Everyone's catching up. So it won't be long before wherever you are in the world, someone's going to come after you. And, and if you're putting a document on a website, it's available to the world. So it doesn't matter if you're registered in Singapore. Um, it's available in the US, so someone can come after you, whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because in the US, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, we have basically the law is enforced by lawsuits. That's literally how the law was written. But what I've been observing with the European Accessibility Act, which is going to require accessibility, especially for e-commerce stores and anything like digital services or things that can be bought online, is it's more fine based. And then I even saw, I don't know if you saw this, that Ireland has added jail time as a potential yeah. uh, thing. So I did see so that. I do I was, think, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it is something definitely to keep an eye on and to remember that your documents 
are pretty much always covered in all of these laws. Anything you put on the web, I think social media is as well. If you're not posting alt text when you post your images on Instagram, that could become a problem for your company. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. So we really appreciate that Grackle Docs came on as a sponsor for WordPress Accessibility Day. So thank you. And I am curious if you could share a little bit about why you all are in, were interested in sponsoring WordPress Accessibility Day. Uh, I suppose a couple of things really. One, we've got a product coming out that fits directly within that. So that in the WordPress mm -hmm. world, so that's great. But I think even the ethic of the way WordPress Accessibility Day works fits completely with ours. But we're here for equity and to make sure everyone's getting what they deserve. And I think we look at sponsorships all the time of what we can and can't sponsor. And obviously it has to be an economic decision of what we do. There's obviously that part to it, but we're generally looking for kind of a kindred spirit with people that we're sponsoring with. So we do a lot of things in education, for instance, that that's economically isn't the biggest bang for our buck, but actually for our bigger our bigger voice that that really suits what we need to do so i think sponsoring here is great because anyone attending the wordpress accessibility day this year will be kind of like-minded professionals they want to share their knowledge as well they'll advocate for the importance of accessible digital uh, content and we believe that power in community and education and the kind of a drive for meaningful change is the thing that's going to do it rather than just putting lawsuits on everyone mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's a big part of why the conference exists and the WordPress Accessibility Day, WP Accessibility Day nonprofit exists because we're trying to figure out how we can get as much information out there and education just so people are aware. Um, right. When and I think about documents, oh, go oh, ahead. Sure. No, just the, what, the one thing that was in the back of my mind when this came around as well is I worked for a couple of years at WordPress VIP as well. So I, I've got a bit of a kind of thing with WordPress. So I, I get the background of what's happening there too. So it, it, again, it was a, a little bit of a heart moment. Yeah. We're very glad to have you on. And of course, you got to have a sneak peek of our schedule, which is going to be published later this week. But I thought it might be fun to give a shout out for what people should be looking for. And so I thought I'd share it with you. And I was curious if there were any sessions that jumped out at you that you think might be interesting and you might want to be tuning into yourself. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a good, it's a good schedule. So actually looking through was, it's interesting. It was like, okay, how do I pick a few out of this? Cause they've all got something to say, right? I suppose the one that jumped mm -hmm. out first was Laney Feingold session right at the beginning. Our Great uh, disabilities lawyer, amazing in the space, uh, proper advocate. She knows this stuff inside out. Anything she says is worth listening to. Don't let a pin drop because whatever she's got to say will be absolutely worthwhile. So really looking forward to that. Uh, if the stuff she doesn't know, but the stuff isn't worth mentioning. So when she speaks, we will listen, which is great. The other couple that I, I picked out, there was one uh, a session by Christina Workman on creating websites with accessibility in mind to start with. So rather than mm -hmm. getting your website up and running and then getting to the back end of it and thinking what's going on, I'd be quite interested to see what she's got to say there. And then Johnny Albert's coming up with um, accessible design strategies as well. So that, that, that's really close to what we do. When we do our training sessions and help sessions, we're quite often with designers to begin with to say, okay, because um, we all love to design things in the, the most fanciful way that we can without thinking too much about it. We've all done it. And designers obviously are that to the nth degree. So actually saying to them, that looks amazing, but how about if we tweak it this way? So I, I think that should be a great one as well. And then there was a uh, Victorian Duca with manual testing as well. We, mm -hmm. we come across so many companies now that just rely on an automatic plugin that just says, oh, I've scanned your website. It's okay. Uh, and they say, we've done our testing uh, and it's so much more than that. So we'll, we're real advocates to ensure that you do manual testing of your websites. You, you have people who know how to audit a website or at least sections of your website um, to make sure you're doing the right thing. So I, I think uh, whatever she's got to say will be great too. Yeah, I know. It's so hard. I always hate throwing that question to people because yeah. it's so hard to pick because I feel like we've done, and every year I think we have a better and better lineup and we have a nice mix of sessions that are designer or content focused and developer focused. And so no matter where you are, there should be something for you. So, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, so a little bird on the sponsors team told me that you are going to be running a giveaway during the event, which is very exciting. People will be able to go to the Grackle Docs sponsor page on the WordPress Accessibility Day website and enter their email address for the opportunity to win something. Do you wanna tell us what you will be giving away during the event? Yeah, absolutely. So we're gonna give a, the freemium version of Grackle Scan away. 
So you can use it to your heart's content on whatever site you've got and keep running that thing to make sure you're all accessible. We've, we're really proud of this product. It's something we've worked on really hard over the last year to, to get out the door. And I thought this was the perfect uh, place to, to give us a lot of that away. Yeah. So look ahead to that as an opportunity to try out the full version, full premium version of the WordPress plugin Grackle Scan, which should be great. I really appreciate you coming and chatting with us. Of course, I'm going to remind everyone real quick here that a WordPress Accessibility Day will be October 9th through 10th this year. Registration is open. You can go register today, right now, if you go to 2024.wpaccessibility.day. And of course, please visit GrappleDoc's sponsor page while you're there, learn more about them. But in the meantime, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, what would be the best place to find you if there's any social media channels or, of course, share the Grackle Docs website, whatever makes sense there. The easiest way and the, the most plentiful way of contacting us is through the website because you'll see everything that we do. We've brushed across a couple of things here. GrackleDocs.com is the place to go for that. Um, if you want to email us, um, please go to info at grappledocs.com because that will go to a group of people who can answer your questions as well. Um, and, and if you want to speak to a human, say so, because we've got plenty of people on staff that love to pick up the phone and, and chat about accessibility all day. So we'll always find someone to have a chat with you too. We do have social media. I'm not the great social media guy, but we've got LinkedIn and Twitter, and I think we've got Facebook and things going on. So you can search us and find us there as well. But yeah, please reach out to us and speak. We're, we're more than happy to speak back. I did see a quote at the end of a question earlier about whether validator works on Mac. Yes, it's web-based, so it doesn't care what operating system you're on. You can just, just throw it into the website and, and get the feedback from there. Thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us and everything that you are doing to help make documents more accessible on the web and for people who download them on their computers as well. <laughs> Great. Thanks a lot, Amber.